Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. For ten more minutes. Action pack. Drama free. Canopy mold in action. Where else can you get this kind of excitement on a Thursday night? <laughs> Ain't no survivor on that going. Gotta sit here and watch the cops. <laughs> get a little drama. <laughs> okay. And now I've got all my parking plane off of there. <coughs> I gotta get these dots. Uh, I know what you're thinking. How come I ain't got no dots over here? Put the red out. <laughs> That's alright, this is enough. That them two will line up this side too. So I'm gonna get my holes in there. Here we go. It'll be good. these hold them back here. Ow. Got me a splinter. Ow. It hurt. Mm, such a little splinter. It hurt so much, man. Little tiny splinters hurt. You just pop them right out of there. Could even reuse them. They're still sticky on the back. Stick them on board and reuse them. And get some more. Now I got all the clay cleaned off of this side, man. My edge just came out perfect. Just absolutely gorgeously perfect. Now we just gotta clean up the rest of this clay. You know I like it when you put that clay under it. When you mount something, you know, it kind of pushes the part out. When you're doing a flat surface like this, when you put that clay underneath it, it kind of pushes that part up a little bit, which is good, and it kind of leaves you a little step right here. Just a tiny one. You can feel it, you know, big time with your finger. You know, there's a big step right there. So that, and when I mold my piece, my other one, when I take off that flat one, you'll see where it goes. And that uh, makes it a lot easier. Let you know where you can tape it off to prime it, you know, and all that. Very moral. But basically, I'm just going to get all this clay out. And when I lay this part up, I'll lay it up with these two parts bolted together, just like it is now. And then when I take it, when I take it out of the mold, then I'll take these two holes and apart. Then I won't have to have a piece of seam tape in the middle here, right where I'm putting my canopy. You know what I mean? That's just so it'll come off. Because uh, otherwise it wouldn't come out the mold. <laughs> you know, just to one piece, it wouldn't come out. If it did, you'd have a heck of a time, man. So, that is why I chose to do that. you got to think, man, how's that thing going to come out? You look for negative stuff on it. It's that negative, you know. That's what kills you. That's when you got to decide, look at where you want your part and planes. You know, if you're starting with a model, look at your model part. Look at your model. See where they put their parting planes. And uh, that's always a good place. Man. That's, get some reference on your plastic model. Because if they got it out of their mold, you can get it out of your mold. That's just a pretty good rule of thumb there. Tell you what, this this part came out so good, man. With this mold right here, you're gonna have to pull this out of the part and sand that edge, man. It'll be it'll be razor sharp when it comes out of the mold. Just razor sharp. And I'm getting just little bits of clay. 
really not putting no pressure with this razor blade. Just letting it get in that corner. Get all that clay out. Get these rags at the dollar store, man. They're like two dollars for a package. And they call them lint free, you know. I don't like them. But I used to do my wax and with my wax on and wax on. Man, I'm sure hoping for some good weather this weekend. So we can get this monumentous occasion over with. The first 10 minute at a time project is going to take to the sky. Besides that big one and stuff like this. I'm talking about real jets. Fire breathing, scratch built, 10 minute at a time jet. <laughs> And we're going to go fly that baby, man. i got to do a couple things to it tomorrow. Uh, you know, when I stiffen that nose wheel spring, <laughs> I was uh, that made it a little bit harder to turn. That servo still turns it good, that 8711. <laughs> I had a pretty small cable go in front of that steering. Snap the steering cable. So I'm going to go get me some heavy-duty cable tomorrow. That cable I put on there was tiny. It was a, all I've, I've had it here in the shop. It's probably one of them Chinese R's. <laughs> you know. So I need to replace the steering cable. And just a couple little things. That's why I want to get this done tonight so I can get the Thunder Chief ready. Just in case we get a window to fly. I think really tomorrow will be the time to fly. But hey guys, we are in desperate need of a cameraman. Uh, I don't want to fly this without a cameraman there, but it's not looking good. Paul can't make it this weekend. He told me to go for it, man. He's got some family business. He's got a 10. Paul can't make it. I went to, over to Tony's house. You know that old boy that filmed that T or that F-35? He did a pretty good job, man. I went over to his house tonight. See if I can catch him at home. See if he won the video. And he wasn't home. Tony, if you're watching, man, come by. I need you Saturday. <laughs> but we might not have a cameraman for Saturday, man. I mean, it's that serious. John will be here, but he just does the sp steel pictures. I know y'all want video. Steel pictures ain't going to cut it. So, if anyone lives close by, wants to come down and video it, we need you, man. Your fellow fans need you. With an HD camera. <laughs> one of them good ones. It has to be at least a 40 times zoom or 20. 10 is not enough. The plane's just a tiny dot in the sky. You can't even find it. Nothing else we can use my camera. I just need uh, someone that is able to videotape these things. Remember, they go fast. 199.9. <laughs> and don't forget to get your t shirt to this momentous jet. It's probably the most famous jet ever made, right here. More people has watched this plane be built than any airplane ever.